Welcome ninjas to the Ninja All-Stars League Play tutorial. So I've mentioned it before, but League Play is a different set of rules that lets you take one team of ninjas and have them grow as they play games after games. So here we have the team little roster. It also comes in the, the box with your Ninja All-Stars game. So in order to start a league. First, you need a team of ninjas. And the way that you do that is by building a team. To build a team, you start with 100 Koban, which is essentially, you know, the point currency that you have in this game. With that 100 Koban, you first pick a clan. Any of the six clans that are available in the game are fair game. And each one has a specific affinity associated to them. After you pick a clan, you then can buy whichever units you want from that clan. You have 100 coins starting off, and each unit here has a price to them. And it tells you how many you are allowed to bring, minimum and maximum. For example here, this tune-in, it says allowance is one, which means you have to bring one tune into the game. And down here it says a kaiken, you need at least one, and a Yajiri, you need at least one. Everything else, you don't have to bring. If we look at other clans, those requirements are different. Here it says, you must bring two Kaiken, and everything else is optional. Each clan also has two heroes they have access to. And every clan, regardless of what you pick, has access to Ronin. And Ronin are kind of special because they cost Koban just like every other unit. However, they also have a cost to keep them on your roster, denoted by the second number after the slash. That's important to keep in mind because after you've purchased all your roster, let's say you spend 96 or so Koban from your initial 100. At the end of each game, if you win, you will get 10 Koban. If you lose, you will get 6 Koban. That's something to keep in mind for when it's time to pay for your Ronin. You don't necessarily want a team of Ronin because then they become too expensive to keep on your team. And if they leave after the game, you'd have to rebuy them again at their full price. So let's fast forward and say that you've purchased a team of ninjas, written down all their stats where it says Name is whatever personal name you want to give them. Type is what type they are. Chunin, Kaiken, Jajiri, etc. Movement, defense, attack, affinity, keywords, and abilities. Some units here allow you to pick from two abilities here, such as the Chunin and the Madoshi. So you could technically have a second Madoshi with the second ability, if that's what you wanted. After you have your team assembled, you then play the game like normal, but you also want to keep track of how much experience points each of your guys is earning. And if you're playing with multiple units of the same kind out in the field, it's also important to make sure you can differentiate between them so you know who's earning the experience specifically. So what earns experience in a game? There are four ways that you can earn experience in every game, and depending on your specific challenge, there can be different ways to gain more experience. But the basic way to earn experience is like this. If you injure an enemy model, you get one experience. That can be when you're attacking or defending. So if your opponent is attacking you and you happen to get a spirit resolved and therefore injure them, you get the experience. If you stun a tuning, every time a non-tuning model stuns a tuning, whether it's attacking or defending, you get one experience. If you reveal a model from stealth, that's one experience. And then at the end of the game, you can pick any one of your guys and they will get free three experience. Whether you want to reward someone who's been doing really well, or you want to push another one of your characters forward with experience, you have the option. Whoever is your R star. The reason why this is important because after you reach a certain threshold of experience, you'll get to roll 
what's essentially their level up, or advancement as it's known in this game. There's a small chart here that tells you, depending on what die results that you get, you can pick which advancement you get. You'll roll two dice. If you happen to roll doubles, you would then take the double result from the chart. If you don't roll doubles, then you will simply get a new keyword. So if I rolled two wins here, I'd have the option to pick an extra movement for said character, or you can take a new keyword from any affinity, as well as the general ones. If you did not roll doubles, the new keyword can only be a general keyword, or one keyword from your clan's affinity. So as you keep track of these advancements onto your characters and they acquire new keywords, you're also going to want to keep track of something known as the rating. Each team has a rating, depending on how long they've been playing, how good they are, etc, etc. When you first start the game, you'll keep track of your rating. And your rating will be equal to how much Koban your entire team is worth, divided by 10, rounded down. So if you spent all 100 of your Koban, your team is worth 10 points. If you did not, let's say you spent 94. 94 divided by 10, rounded down, is 9. But then, after you've done that, you will add another point of rating for every advancement that you've given your team. So if you've done this roll on at least one character, that means you gave another character a new keyword or a new advancement, whatever it is, and that will increase your rating by one. You will also advance your rating by one for each hero and ronin you have on your team. The reason why this is important is because depending on the difference between your rating and your opponent's rating, whoever has the lesser of the two, they will get certain bonuses to try and even up the playing field. They have a potential to get four bonuses. So you look at the difference between your the ratings of the teams, and for every one point of difference, you'll get one of these reroll tokens. The reroll token may be spent at any point during the game to reroll any roll of the player's choice, friendly or enemy. And then you have to reroll all the dice. You don't get to pick certain ones. For every ten points difference that you have between the two players you'll get a single moon power token. So at the beginning of a model's activation, you can give them the moon power token, and they will act as if they have it and spend it as normal. For every five point of difference, the lower ranked team may reward one additional also award at the end of the game. And then whoever has the lower team rating will also get a bonus revenue at the end of the game that is equal to the difference between the two ratings, up to a maximum of six. Something else that's very important to league play is what's known as downtime. There's a chart here for what's, some, what's called downtime. If at the end of the game you have models in the healing house, they have the potential to suffer serious injuries. So for each model you'll roll a dice and consult this chart here. If you roll water, that model in the healing house gets an additional XP. If you roll fire, that model cannot play in the next game. If you roll air, that model will start the next game in the healing house. If you roll earth, it's no effect. If you roll void, that model cannot play in the next two games. And if you roll spirit, another model that ended the game in the healing house does not need to roll on the table. It may play as normal in the following game. Of course, if you don't have another model in the healing house, then it doesn't really matter. And technically, that model, who also rolled the spirit, is also okay. So that means if you have a team with only, let's say, seven models, and one of your models is in the healing house, and you rolled a void result for that model, you better hope that the next challenge that you get does not have a maximum ninja size of seven, because then you can't use one of your ninjas because they've been injured and can't participate in the game. So that's something to take in consideration for when you're building your team and when you're playing the game itself. You want to minimize how many models are left in your injured healing house at the end of the game. Because the way that I interpret it, the game ends at the end of a round 
as soon as both players have finished their activations. You don't get to perform the upkeep phase. Otherwise, you would just perform double healing house. So the way that I interpret it is both players finish activating, end of the game. Stop right there. Whoever's in the healing house, too bad. Which could be potentially dangerous if a player sees the game is about to end and potentially they have no way of winning. So they're probably just going to go after you and try and injure as many ninjas as possible. Imagine how devastating that could be to your game, to your future games. Something else to keep track of when playing with heroes and ronin, they don't get experience and they can't increase their attributes and gain new keywords during league play. They're unique and so you can't have more of them on the same team. And ronin follow those same rules except, you know, again, at the end of the game, if you don't have enough money to keep them on your team, they're gone and you have to rebuy them. But that also means in between games, you can spend your Koban to buy new units for your team. So if you happen to lose one for whatever reason and then need to refill its ranks, you could buy another. But of course, they would start off at zero experience. So that's League Play. It allows you to play a team and have them grow and persist over multiple games. So it's better than just a one-off. Plus, you get to really pick from a wide selection of characters here and make a team that's truly unique and fits your playstyle. So what are we waiting for ninjas? Go out there and start a team. Be the best in your league.